Dois. Dois. Um, dois, 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 a hard week, I believe. For me, it was. I do not know if it was for you, but for me, it was. But praise the Lord, for we are here. Today is Sabbath. We can rest from the burdens of the week, trials of the life, and we can renew our spiritual lives for one more week. Praise the Lord, for we are God's children. And because we are God's children, he doesn't leave us without knowledge to be saved. Praise the Lord, because we have been made in his image. Praise the Lord, for he has given to us what we need, the basic needs of our lives have been provided to the mightful hand of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, before I would like to thank the Lord for the privilege he has given to me to speak and to share with you the word of God. Believe or not, as the title says, why do I have to believe? Believe or not, it has been an answer to my prayer. And I praise the Lord for that. You see, long, uh, I think three months ago, I was speaking with someone, and he told me about something that I was looking. And he told me, well, why don't you make it a matter of prayer? And I prayed to the Lord, and he answered my prayer. When I was thinking about sharing the word of God, of what he has allowed me to know and to discover, I thought also, why give it not at God's hands through prayer? And I did. And by the grace of God, today I can stand to talk to you about the word of God. Let me clarify something. What I'm going to share with you is not coming from me. It is written in the word of God. So God is just using me as an instrument to let you know what he wants, what he wants you to know. Well, to start, I would like to thank you because you heard the voice of the Spirit and you allowed the Spirit to lead you to come here into the church and listen to the Word of God. Why do I have to believe? We are going to answer this question. But before that, I would like to say this. You see, the Lord is not just looking for people who can stand and speak. The Lord is looking, seeking for people who can truly have a ministry to his people. And I would like to give a word of encouragement for all those who were chosen to work I do not know your struggles, but believe that the Lord has called you to work for him. So be faithful in the job God has given to you. My message or the key text is found in Job 
chapter 1, verse 1. Just one chapter, or oh, one verse. But before I read that, I would like to invite you to open your Bible in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 13. There, or this chapter, is known as the chapter of faith. I believe Paul wrote this book for many others who do not believe. But anyway, I believe. That says the Bible. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they, are, they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You see, all this, when you read the previous verses, you understand that Paul speaks about Enoch. He speaks about Noah, Abraham, and he says all of them died in the faith. All of them. They were saved by grace through the faith that was given as a gift from the Lord. So, those who want to be saved, they must be, or they must believe, and they must have faith. For if you believe and have faith, you shall be saved as they were saved. Amen. Salvation is as simple as this. You don't need to do greater things. You just need to believe. Because you have the past. Ellen White says, that we do not need to fear of what is going to take place unless we forget what God did on the past. So we have the example of the past so that we can be led through the Spirit and we can be assured of the gift of salvation. We don't need to do any other thing. We just need to believe in the Lord. And the Bible says that even Rahab, and I would like to share with you this thought, every time that I'm called to speak in the late dormitory, I like to share experiences about women. And when I'm talking about Rahab, I like to mention an important point that God helped me to understand. You see, Rahab says that we heard of what God has been doing and I'm accepting. So, I could learn that if you want to be saved, you need also to be informed of what is going on around you. If you want to be saved, you have to be informed of what God is doing so that you can recognize recognize when God's salvation will be sent toward you. You have to be aware of what God is doing because if you do not uh, listen to what God is saying to you, surely you are going to lose this salvation. And Rahab was, was aware of what God was doing that. And when God sent the spies to save her, she recognized David is mentioned also in this chapter. You see, Bible calls him as having a heart after God's own heart. But you see, you know what David did. He killed. He committed adultery. And we have been crying that much to the Lord. Lord, please forgive me because I did that and... I'm tired with my sins, Father, please. I do not know where is your faith. But when we have faith, the Lord Jesus Christ is able to take away through his sin or his blood all our sins. The blood of Jesus Christ has power to cleanse us. But you have to believe in it. I think it was on Thursday I was sharing with Aias, and I was saying, if we would believe in the power of this message we have been preaching, surely our church wouldn't be as it is now. 
we preach about justification by faith, but we are the one doubting if the Lord can truly forgive and cleanse us. When you are, you see, when you go to the Bible, if there is something that is very clear, it's about salvation. God made salvation as simple as, or as clear as the water. Even a child can understand that you just have to accept Jesus' sacrifice by faith. Even the faith doesn't come from you. God gives to you. And Romans 10, 17 says that if you want to have this faith, you have to listen to the word of God. To listen to the word of God. And James says, you be not just a listener of the word of God, but be what? Doer of the word of God. You see, as you listen to the word of God, be a doer, live what the word of God is saying, and you shall be saved. That is what the Bible is simply teaching us. And when I discovered the amazing truth that is found in Job chapter 1, verse 1, I was praising the Lord. I preached this sermon, I think, thrice for me. Always that I prepare a sermon. I like to prepare my sermons long ago, you see? Yeah. And I remember once I was walking through the streets of AUP and preaching to me. I was preaching this message to me. Job chapter 1, verse 1. Let's look closer to what the Lord has to say to us. First, let me share with you the outline of this book. I did this, the study of this book, and I discovered that this book is divided in three parts. In the ver in first three chapters, you can see the life of Job before the trials. From chapter 4 up to chapter 38, you find the life of Job in trials. Now, from chapter 39 up to 42, you find God restoring all that Job lost. So, doesn't matter what you are living now, if you believe that at the end you can be victorious, praise the Lord. Doesn't matter what you are committing, what you are doing, if you have a lot of sins, just believe that at the end you shall be victorious because the blood of Jesus shall take away your sins. See, Job was thinking he sinned against the Lord. And his talking with his three friends shows that. But later on, he was saying, no, 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 no. Lord, you have to come here. You have to be here. I have to question you why these things, is, why these things are happening to me. And when the Lord appeared to him, you can read that from chapter 39 to 42, Job remained silent. Job realized that the struggle of the Lord is greater than his struggle. He, the Lord is struggling with Satan, spiritual power. He can't be seen literally, but by faith we can see him. See. And when he realized that, he said, oh, Lord, no, 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 sorry, pardon, pardon. And God restored. So I do not know what is the struggles. Are you struggling with pornography? Wow, pornography? What is that? Are you struggling with fornication, smoke, alcohol, and things that instead, to bring you closer to the Lord, are leading you far from the Lord. Are you struggling with these things? The Lord has paid already the cost. He can deliver you from these things. Job chapter, Job chapter 1 verse 1 says, There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. Wow. I took four important characteristics that the Bible gives that Job had. Four important characteristics. And I'm going to talk about these four 
characteristics. You see, the first one, the Bible says he was what? Blameless. The second, upright. The third, he was someone who feared the Lord. And the fourth, he shunned evil. These four characteristics are very important. For when you go to Revelation 14, let's open our Bible. Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 to 5, you find people that have the same characteristics. Revelation 14, verse 1 to 5. There the Bible says, Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sounds of harpists playing their harps. They sang as it were a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. These same characteristics are found in the life of Job. You see, these people, these 144,000 who are standing before the throne of the Lord, they are there because they are righteous. They fear the Lord. They follow the Lamb wherever he goes. Now I was asking to myself, if the Bible says that we all have sinned in Romans 3, 23, and come short from the glory of God, how can we be called righteous before the throne of the Lord? How can we be called righteous, blameless, before the throne of the Lord if we all have sinned and come short from God's glory? The Bible says that these people, they have the name of Jesus' Father in their forehead here. In Father's name, you see, name is a me, it symbolizes character. They simply are dressed, they have Jesus' character. They are clothed with Jesus' character. That's because Jesus' life is righteous enough before the Father, then when we get it, we are righteous enough before the Father. Unless we understand the message of justification by faith, we can never be able to stand before the throne of the Father. It means if Job was living today, he would be among the 144,000. Blameless. I, wa I went to look for this meaning. Blameless, innocent. Someone who is not guilty. Righteous before the Lord. Shunned evil. You see, the evil is here. He goes so. That is what the Bible is saying. Pornography is here. He goes so. Adultery is here. He goes so. Fornication is here. He goes so. That is what the Bible is saying. I know that among this congregation have several problems. But you see what the Bible says. Doesn't matter your past. Doesn't matter your past. The Lord can become it new. New. You just have to believe. But why do we believe? Why do we have 28 believes. 
I was giving instructions back home to VOI group. And I told my students, you have to question your beliefs. Because if you do not know how to prove that to others, you are going to fail. Actually, there are several minds who know how to think. And through their thoughts, they can take you away from God's way. Why? You have to believe because others believed in these same beliefs. When I was doing the study of this book, I realized that even Job believed and he had the true knowledge of the state of the dead. Uh -huh. Job 14, verse 10 to 11. There the Bible says, But man dies and is laid away. Indeed, he breathes. His last and where is he? As water disappears from the sea, and a river becomes parched and dries up. So man lies down and does not rise, till the heavens are no more. They will not awake, nor be roused from their sleep. You have to manage, have the mastery of this knowledge so that you can be able to testify to others. Job didn't have the knowledge of the true state of the dead. It means that if he was here today, he wouldn't accept with many truths that we have been accepting through movies, novels, TV programs, and others, books. He wouldn't, as we like to lose time watching and doing those things. He didn't just have the true knowledge about the true state of the dead, but he even so believed that the Lord made him. Job 33, verse, or 34, Job 31, verse 15. There says, did not he who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same one fashion us in the womb? See, if Job was living today, he wouldn't believe in evolution. He wouldn't believe in evolution because he knew, no, he knew that the Lord made him. He would believe in Godhead. Job would know how to explain the Godhead. He would say that the Father is God, that the Son is God, and even the Spirit is God. But many of us do not believe so. He says that the Lord, my, the Spirit, made me. Made me. Wow. Wow. Why do we have to believe? Brothers, we have to believe because others believed on these same beliefs. Our church didn't invent any doctrine, but they are found clear in the Bible. But because they believed and were saved, if we believe, we are going also to be saved. But let's speak a little bit more about this verse, verse 1. As I said, we can stand before the throne of the Father, righteous, when we accept Jesus Christ. And that is the job that the Lord has to do with us today. But even before, the Bible says that he feared the Lord. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 12 to 13 says that we have fear God and keep what? His commandments. So the fear of the Lord is connected with keeping. It means Job worshipped the Lord on the Sabbath. He kept the commandments. It means that Job would be doing part of God's people on these last days. For 
Revelation 12, 17 gives two important characteristics of those who are called God's people. The Bible says that those who are God's people in the last days, they keep God's commandments and they have what? Jesus' faith. And he had. If he was blameless, upright, it means he knew about the methods of justification by faith. But let me explain a little bit more about God's commandment. Revelation 13, verse 16, the Bible says, is coming a power who is going to give us a seal in the right hand and the forehead. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 6 to 8, the Bible says also that the Lord wants to write his law in our forehead and in our right hand. The Bible says also, on the last days, the great controversy will be about the law of God. Those who fear the Lord and keep his commandment, and those who fear men and keep his commandment. This controversy. Now my question is, who are you fearing? Who? To whom are you worshipping? The Lord Jesus Christ or the other Lord? For there are two, there are two, Jesus Christ and Satan. How, what is, what our lifestyle style does say about the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, we studied in the lesson that we can even be lost inside the church of the Lord. You see, we can. So, Devil and the Lord and are preparing his people to be sealed. But before that, they are marking. They are giving the mark. See how the Lord is marking? Just look. Watch over your life. What, are you, what have you been doing when someone is not watching you? How many times have you been reading the word of God in one week? We have been saying, yeah, no, 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 no. we are Seventh-day Adventists. Yes, we are. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have already salvation. We have to work it. Work. Ask to yourself, what is the difference between those who are out of the church with you? Ask to yourself, and you want to see it. Smoke, alcohol, they do the same. Why God has to kill them and save you if you are doing the same thing? Just because you are inside the church? Nope. Things are not like that. Satan is marking his people. The Lord is marking. When the Spirit shall be poured out, we will, we will be sealed. And, the, and those who receive not the spirit, will be also sealed and receive the mark of the beast. It's not a 666 that you are going to see receiving, the, no. You have to accept mentally and show it by actions. As you have to accept the Lord mentally and show it in your actions. It means Job would be saved. Job, he understood the message of justification by faith. And here is the last point that I want to share with you. The message of justification by faith, says Ellen G. White, is the message that will prepare God's people to receive him. This message is very important that there is no sanctification nor glorification without justification. So what is justification? Is accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord. Accepting his life. Being a new creature before the Lord, as Paul said. Is accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And when you go to the sanctuary, you can see that very clear. If there is someone who doesn't believe in God, come and talk to me. 
I'm going to show you how the sanctuary speaks about the Lord. The first, or the court, represents justification. There the Lord died. There he resurrected. The first step when we accept Jesus Christ as the Lord, we have to be, we have to accept and be baptized and resurrect with him. But many are those who think that after justification there is nothing else to be done. But Jesus Christ didn't finish the work of redemption on the cross. He went to heaven and he remained in the holy place of the heaven sanctuary until October 22, 1844. And lastly, he changed. He went to the most holy place. You see, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have to follow the Lord. Follow the Lamb. Jesus said, I'm the way. And Psalm says that the way of the Lord is in the sanctuary. Follow the Lord. Yes, you are already baptized. Start to read the word of God because it's the first altar of furniture in the sanctuary, in the holy place. Pray and share with others what the Lord has been teaching you. Prayer, reading the word of God and witness. These three will enable us to the last step of salvation, glorification. Before Israel got in the promised land, he, they had to cross the Red Sea. Later on, the wilderness and subsequently the promised land. Before we go to heaven, we have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, see? And we have to start the process of sanctification, the spiritual wilderness. And lastly, we shall receive the Lord. Sanctification will prepare us to live at God's presence. Sanctification. But there is no glorification without sanctification. There is no sanctification without justification. Can you please project the... See, it's very important. I was talking with my classmate and he share with me an important image. You see, he told me the word righteousness. Righteousness that we receive from the Lord when we accept him as personal savior. In Chinese, is the connection of two words. Or, yeah, two words. Lamb over me. You see the Chinese language. There are many other things that I discovered how the Chinese language speaks about biblical truths. And one of them is this. What is the story that reminds us a lamb over something? Jesus. The story of Jesus. He's the lamb of the Lord. If you want to have righteousness, you have to accept the lamb who died on the cross to take away all our sins. Righteousness. Job even believed in the message of three angels. Yeah, how? We have been thinking that these things that they are in Revelation are new. When Sodom and Gomorrah were to be destroyed, how many angels did God send? How many angels did God send? Three. Three angels. The world is going to be destroyed. But before that, how many angels does God send? Three. You see, what is happening today is just a repetition of what took place before. If you want to know how to be saved, let's study what is there so that we can know the secret to be saved today. Brothers and sisters, before I finish my message, I have an appeal to do for you. 
these things that I'm sharing with you, you can discover, and God can allow you to discover more and more. They are clear in the Bible. You just have to take time, take time to open the Word of God. But that's, this is the problem. We just like to talk to the Lord. We don't like to listen to the voice of the Lord. Through prayer, we speak to the Lord. Through the word, God speaks to us. Through witness, we speak to others, you see. We have to believe. If we believe we are going to be saved as others were saved. Linda, okay? Okay? Did you listen? Did you hear what I said? You have to believe because others believed in what we are called to believe. Kosi. Yeah? Yeah. Solomon. That is what the Bible says. Yeah. Fernando. Huh? We are not to bring new doctrines. No, 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 no. We just have to follow the way that others crossed. We just have to cross the same road. And we are going to find salvation as others found. Stephanie. Yeah. I'm speaking seriously. Smyrna. Okay. What is your struggle? If you have anything that would, you would like to give to the Lord... You would like to share to the Lord. And if you believe in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that can take away and can give to you power to overcome all these problems, please bow your head and pray for one minute. If you believe, if you believe, I know my struggles, I know my trials, you know yours, and you know also the solution and salvation to take away all these problems and be ready for second coming. You know. Then, do not doubt. You just have to believe. Live in accordance of what you have heard. People, we have power. African congregation. Let's use our power. Let's walk as the Lord says. Let's forget those ways who are leading us to the death. Let's come and cry before the Lord. If it is your will, and you would like to renew your heart, why not bow down, pray for a while, and remain with your closed eyes? We are going to pray. I'll be praying for mine. You'll be praying for yours for one minute. You might be thinking that I went far and for me there is no hope anymore. Please remain with your eyes closed and think of what I'm saying. 
one thought I could take in the lesson this week. The lesson of Sun where Monday, at the last part, said that sometimes what we need is just someone to listen to us. It's just a home where we can sit and a feeling called love. All these things we can find in Jesus Christ. If you believe the way to the Lord is opened, you can find the Lord Jesus once again. If you think you've fought, fought, and there is no more hope for you, I'm just sharing with you the truth that there is hope for you, and you can believe. You can believe for Jesus' power to take, to set you free from the sins you've been struggling with. If you raise your will, even with your closed eyes, I'm asking you please to stand. Stand. But please do not stand because your seatmate is standing. Stand because you believe that you have, you have to do something in your spiritual life. And you believe much more that Jesus can help you. Can help you. If you raise so, and you would like to renew your life, please stand and we're going to pray together as the Lord will bless and fill our heart, especially for what He has been doing for us. I'll be calling Elder Chibomba, he will be praying. But believing that the Lord Jesus is there to help us, to restore us. Thank you. 